Hi, my name is Matt Kluskowski, creator of the Photoshop system, which is a system to learn Photoshop for Lightroom and Camera Raw users. And I created this bonus video really it's kind of like a precursor to the system because I think it's important to learn the do's and the don'ts. You know, when do we do uh, things inside of Lightroom and when don't we do things inside of Lightroom? And when's that, when's that time to jump over to Photoshop? A couple of things before we get started. First off, uh, I say Lightroom, it could just as easily be Camera Raw. Same thing as Lightroom's develop module or any other raw editor out there. Uh, all the raw editors basically do the same things and then they also basically don't do the same things and give us that need to want to jump over to Photoshop. Second thing is, is the lines have really been blurred. So if you're ever wondering, like, doesn't it look like both of them do the same thing? In so many cases they do. I try to give you some thoughts throughout this video because uh, there are times where I do something inside of Lightroom and there are times where I do the same thing over inside of Photoshop. And I'll give you some thoughts as to why as we go through this, all right? Now, the very first thing is gonna be toning. When I say toning, I mean white balance, exposure, uh, shadows, highlights, saturation, clarity, things like that. I think those are gonna be the things we're always gonna wanna make sure we start off inside of Lightroom. So here we've got a photo that is obviously overexposed, a little bit of backstory, Great Smoky Mountains, I'm borrowing somebody's lens, um, you know, no filters or anything like that. And I wanna get, you know, the, the water smoother. So I just overexposed. So let's take a look up here in the basic panel inside of Lightroom. This is where we're gonna wanna do exposure, shadows, highlights, whites, blacks, anything to do with color. All right. I can pull back the exposure. You know, I can pull back the highlights. I get a lot of leeway there. Open up the shadow, I get a lot of leeway there. A uh, little bit of clarity, a little bit of vibrance, maybe warm it just a little bit. Hit the backslash key, but you can see, I mean, it's a huge difference with just a few different sliders. And if you compare that in Photoshop, what would we have to do? I mean, we'd have to go into curves and we're not gonna, we're not gonna get there with what we wanna do with, you know, when, when you pull a curve one way, it pushes the other way. We're not gonna get what we want out of curves. And, and number one, we're never gonna get the, the detail back in, um, in the, uh, the highlights back here. Now, interesting thing to know is we are now in the Photoshop space and that's important. I don't wanna make this a raw versus JPEG uh, discussion, but when we're working inside of Lightroom and we have a raw file, we get a lot of leeway in those shadows and highlights, all right? The second we go to Photoshop, and by the way, all I did, I reset this and I went photo, edit in, Photoshop. I didn't force save it as a low quality JPEG or anything like that, but the second that I go into Photoshop, I'm not in the raw world anymore, so I don't get that same leeway in my shadows and highlights. So we'd have curves, we could go to brightness and contrast. Again, it kind of just makes it muddy. We're not gonna get there with brightness and contrast. Uh, vibrance and saturation, we'd have to open up another panel to do it. And uh, you know, we do have, if I click on the layer here, we do have a shadow highlights adjustment in Photoshop, but again, you're gonna see we're not gonna get there Look how it deteriorates back here versus what we had inside of Lightroom. Okay, there's a big difference in the quality. You can see back, back here, we're not even able to regain it. And part of that is because we left the raw world and now we're working inside of Photoshop space and we're not gonna have that same, uh, that same raw level of quality when it comes to our editing. So I'd say there's two things here. There's one, there's the quality of raw. Number two, there's the number of things of places that we'd have to go to if we wanna edit this raw file, where when we're inside a Lightroom, all we have to go is one panel and we can get all those things done right there on the right-hand side. All right, I uh, got a little monkey shot here. It's just to show you, look at the highlight, look at the, the level of, of detail I can regain in the highlights from the highlight slider. All right, jump back over here, same thing. You saw the shadow highlights adjustment and I'm just not able to get there. Not able to get there inside of Photoshop. Again, I didn't save it as a low quality JPEG. I literally opened up the raw file out of the raw mode into, into Photoshop's interface. And, uh, and you can see we're never gonna get that same level of highlight uh, detail that we got before. All righty, moving on, Sh sharpening and noise reduction. I'd say, you know, sharpening and noise reduction, we're gonna wanna do this inside of Lightroom, all right? There are gonna be times, this, <laughs> when it comes to do's and don'ts, this is gonna be one of the ones where it's both. And uh, I'll explain that in a second here. So we'll head down here to our detail panel. And if I wanna sharpen the photo, first off, I gotta zoom into 100% here. If I wanna sharpen the photo, I can crank up a lot of sharpening right here inside of Lightroom. Now, couple things. Number one, little disclaimer. 
I think Lightroom and I think Lightroom's sharpening and noise reduction is as good as anything out there. I know some people use plugins. I know some people swear by their Photoshop methods to do it. I just want to let you know, if that works for you, go for it. I don't care how you get to your end result as long as you get there and you're happy with it. But I also want to make sure everybody knows that you don't have to do that. The, the quality of your sharpening and noise reduction here is just as good as anything else. It's just that some people may be more familiar with the plugin and see it a little bit differently. But a little to why, a little bit I'm back on why I think I use Lightroom sometimes, but then sometimes I do jump to Photoshop. If you look in this case here, we, we crank up the sharpening. It starts to add some, some crazy grainy stuff in the sky here. Of course, I can mask it away with the masking slider. Problem is, the masking slider starts to take it away from parts of the photo that I wanted in. So if that happens, I'll jump to Photoshop. I'll jump to Photoshop and do the sharpening. We do have a brush. We have a brush here inside of Lightroom, and we can go and we can take our sharpening slider, crank it up to 100, and brush it in. The problem is, is, is if you've ever tried this, even at 100, it's not a lot. It, it gets you nowhere near what the detail panel got you when it came to sharpening. So if I do really want to sharpen the photo and I want to hide it from parts of the photo or other parts of the photo, I'll jump over to Photoshop, Commander Control J, make a new layer, filter, sharpen. We'll go to Smart Sharpen here. I'm going to sharpen the living daylights out of it. It's probably a little over sharpened, but we'll zoom in. Look at that, somebody actually climbed up there and brought and skied or snowboarded down there, that's crazy. Anyway, um, so I got a new layer here. All I have to do is add a layer mask to it, take my brush tool, set to black, and I can paint that sharpening away from the parts of the photo that I want. I can use selection tools to do it, and I can be very fast and precise with it, and I can get more out of the sharpening here than I could in Lightroom. If I think the whole photo can handle all the sharpening, I'm not going to leave Lightroom. But if there are times where I want to just paint it into parts of the photo, I'll do it this way. Uh, noise reduction, same thing. Let's hop back over here. I'd say for noise reduction, I'm primarily going to stay inside of Lightroom. All right, Lightroom's noise reduction is actually way better than Photoshop's. So we're going to try to stay in Lightroom. And the good thing is, is Lightroom's noise reduction, we'll zoom in here. It gets rid of the color noise. That's all that little red, red green, and blue stuff gets rid of that really quick and then your luminance noise will get rid of all the grainy uh, looking stuff that we see in the background over here. Now, if it happens to take away detail, there is a noise reduction brush and you can just bring your luminance down, keep the color up, and then you can paint that brush in the background. And that actually works much better than the sharpness brush. Next up, vignettes. Or, no, dodge and burn. This is a good one. Um, like I'd give you a bad one. So. Dodging and burning. We have a brush tool inside of Lightroom. I'm going to recommend if you're really into dodging and burning, you don't use it. We, we've even got presets that Lightroom comes with. You can see burn and dodge right down here. And all they do is move the, uh, the exposure slider. So I can, I can darken part of the photo and then I can go over here, click new. I can brighten part of the photo. And then if I want to go over here and darken it even more, then I got to click new again and darken it more. What ends up happening? is I have like 17 adjustment brush pins floating around my photo and I can't figure out what any of them do. So I do believe dodging and burning is a big part of my workflow. I'm gonna do it inside of Photoshop. Reason being, I can be much more creative. You know, I wanna direct your eye. I wanna direct your eye to what I want you to see in the photo. So I can do that by uh, Command or Control J, make a new layer, head over here to the dodge tool keep the exposure about 20, 20% or so. And then I can go in here and just paint on things that I want to be brighter. All right. And I don't have to keep creating a new layer to do it. I can do it all on the same, on the same layer here. A little shortcut for you. Instead of switching tools to the, the burn tool, hold down your option key on the Mac or alt on the PC. And now I automatically switch. It doesn't give you any on-screen feedback, which kind of stinks um, because you really don't know other than looking at it. You'll just have to take my word for it. It's getting darker. So the more I brush, the more I paint, the darker things are going to get. All right. Let go of the option or all key. And now you're back into brightening mode. Press it. You're back into darkening mode. So if you look at the layers panel, that's before, that's after. All right. So now I'm able to, to get really creative about drawing your eye to parts of the photo I want you to see. Now, vignettes. Vignetting is something that I do on just about every photo. I, I, I do most of my work outdoors. I can't control the lighting. 
Okay. I can't, I can't, I can't go and flag the sun. And most of the times I don't want to, especially in a landscape scene, you're, you're definitely not going to go flag off parts of, of your scene, but I do a vignette to kind of draw your attention into the photo, take it off the edges, draw your attention in. So take a look at the bottom layer. This was the default Lightroom or camera raw vignette. All right. I just went into the effects panel and I added a vignette. Now take a look at the top layer. Here's what we're going to do. And I only do this. This is what's important. I only do this on a photo that I really like and I want to spend some extra time with. I think I'm going to print this. It's going to be a portfolio piece. I really like this photo. If I think, you know what, I'm just going to do a quick Facebook share. I'll just add a vignette fast. But if I think I'm going to spend some time on it, I'll go into Photoshop. I'll take the uh, elliptical marquee tool, make a selection around whatever it is I want to spotlight, go to select and mask. And the advantage is, is I can use feather and I can actually see how much I'm feathering the edge there. All right, click OK. I've got her selected. I actually want the opposite. I want the background. So we just invert that selection. Command or Control J will pop it up onto its own layer. And then I change the blend mode to multiply. I can reduce the opacity a little bit. But what's better about this is that I'm using the photo itself to burn in the outside edges. Rather than adding kind of a black overlay to the photo, uh, I'm actually going in here. I'm using the photo itself to really just bring attention to whatever it is I want to spotlight in the photo. Again, I think the important part of this, and this I kind of mentioned it in the beginning where the, the lines are blurred. I think the important part is not every photo gets the same level of attention. All right. If I just kind of like the photo and I want to do some quick adjustments, maybe post it on Instagram, whatever, then I'll just do it the fastest way possible. But if I really like it, I'll spend the extra time. Removing distractions. This is another one. This is one um, we're, we're, we're going to get out of Lightroom pretty fast for this one. I'll show you, you know, we've got the spot removal brush. It's going to be really difficult to get what we want. Main reason is the spot removal brush inside of Lightroom, um, no matter what mode you have it set to, has to pull from part of the photo. It's got to duplicate part of the photo. Photoshop, which has some of the best distraction removal technology that's around. Um, in fact, I think it is the best. Photoshop will let you pull from anywhere in the photo. Okay. It'll actually make its own area up. So what I would say is, you know, for something like this, I think the patch tool works the best and it works really simple. All I have to do is lasso around the part of the photo that I want fixed. All right. And once I lasso around it, click and drag, and it's done. <laughs> Left a little bit of a seam up here, so I just lasso again and drag it somewhere else. But that's it. Uh, so, so if I'm doing any hardcore removing of distractions, you know, if uh, if it's a little spot in the sky or something like that, of course Lightroom will work great. But if I'm doing anything like this, I'm going to jump into Photoshop. Number one, I get so much more control because now I can zoom in. I don't have these little pins hindering and I can really easily switch over here to the clone stamp tool, option or alt click, get into some of the more harder parts of the photo, work on that option or alt click over here. And you can see I can just go in there and I can start to remove from the harder parts of the photo where the patch tool won't work. But Using Lightroom, just remember, it's got to pick from something in the photo where when you're inside of Photoshop, it can make up its own area. It'll look at what you're painting on, it'll look at what you're painting near, and it'll fix itself. All right, the next one, we got special effects. So this one, it, it's so wide open, it can be anything. It, think of it as whenever you decide you want to work with, with two different photos, could be, you know, a, a sky, you want to do a sky replacement, you want to do a reflection, whatever. Anytime you want to start to work with two different photos, anytime you want to make selections, uh, anytime you want to make blend modes. So here's a great example. I've got this lens flare image. You can grab them off of like a Adobe stock or any stock website. And I'm just going to copy it and paste it in here. Command or control T, free transform, bring it up a little bit. And then blend modes. These are something we don't have inside of Lightroom. Number one, we can't combine two photos in Lightroom. Number two, we don't have blend modes, but I just change it to screen, reduce the opacity. I can add just some nice lens flare into the background there. It just kind of gives the whole photo a different feeling for me. So uh, again, this also is, I've got tricks, you know, you can use the radial filter and different techniques inside of Lightroom to get something similar. 
if it's not a photo I like that much, I'll do it the fastest way possible. But it's a, if it's a photo I want to spend some time on, then I'm going to jump over to Photoshop to do it. All right. Uh, and that goes true for, you know, anytime you want to combine, you know, two different photos together, we want to replace a sky or anytime you need really complex selections. All right. And fast selections. Uh, I'll just go over here and make a quick selection of the sky and we want to drop in. We've got our sky layer up here. So all I have to do is create a layer mask and I'm able to drop in a different sky. It's on its own layer. So now I can reduce the opacity. Um, I can adjust it. I can do whatever I need to because I have access to working on both layers and we don't have layers inside of Lightroom. So that's always going to be a place where you're going to want to jump to Photoshop. Moving on from that black and whites, black and whites. Again, this is going to be one of those ones where if you're not really into black and white and you just want to do a quick conversion, jump over here to the black and white panel inside of Lightroom. All right. You can adjust the colors, every specific color inside of there. What I usually find is people that really like black and white want to go the extra mile. It, it's not just a panel. I think, I think people that really like black and white conversions, it's more of an art to, to, to somebody like that. So I think there's some things we can do here in Photoshop and then I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts in a second. Um, the gradient map, it's a great black and white tool. Click on the gradient map. It's automatically going to choose the black and white gradient, which to me almost always looks better than what we get inside of Lightroom for that black and white conversion. And there's so many fun things you can do with it. You can click on the gradient. Um, you can add stops, add stops in between here. And if you want to, you know, a richer, darker black and white, you can keep it black. Uh, it's just kind of, it's mapping the tones that would normally be a, a darker gray to black or double click on it. And you've got a, uh, a color picker that'll pop up and I can go in here and add a little bit of color. It just gives a nice, rich black and white. And then I'll finish it by saying, if you're really into black and white, most people use plugins. I use on one effects when I'm going to do a hardcore black and white conversion. Um, I think, I think your, your black and white plugins are some of the best that are out there and they give you so many options and they take, they, they take some of the guesswork away and they usually have a ton of presets that kind of spur, uh, the creative conversion process for it. So like most of your black and whites, unlike everything, you know, it's not a Lightroom, It's not a Photoshop. I think plugins are generally where most people do their black and whites. All right, let's finish this up. Lens corrections. I think lens corrections, we're going to do most of that inside of Lightroom. We've got a whole panel de uh, dedicated to lens corrections, chromatic aberrations. It'll uh, detect the profile, the lens that you used and do some vignetting correction and whatnot. And then if you ever do have any distortion or anything like that, you've got the transform panel, you've got upright, and then you've also got the transform uh, manual way, which you basically just click and drag along the straight surfaces in your photo and Lightroom will go in there and fix it for you. All right. And then you've also got some sliders down here that you can go in and kind of, kind of take over the process if you need to, but I think your lens corrections, we're going to try to stick into Lightroom for that for the most part. And then finally printing, this is going to be something that we want to make sure we're, we're inside of Lightroom for. In fact, I actually had somebody ask me, you know, why would I go, why, why would I go into Lightroom to print? And to a Lightroom user, you're, you're not going into Lightroom. To a Lightroom user, you're already here. You're organizing, you're starting your workflow, you're developing. Um, your job is if you ever have to leave Lightroom to get back as fast as possible, because that's where you want to start your photos and this is where you want to finish off. Uh, there's a ton of little templates up here uh, inside of the template browser browser and then all your color management and sizing settings are going to be over here on the right hand side. So it just keeps everything nice and tidy all in one place. If you are going to print, I think you want to be back here inside of Lightroom because this is where it really kind of fills out the entire workflow. Well, folks, thanks so much for giving me some time here. I hope this helped fill in some gaps between, you know, when should you use Lightroom and when are some of those times where Photoshop's going to be a better tool. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again real soon.